Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at finding the resultant force and then finding the magnitude and direction of that resultant force. So the resultant is really just the imaginary force that an object would feel if it were being pulled in two different directions by two different forces. For example, let's say the object is right here at the origin and let's say some someone or something is pulling in this direction at a 45 degree angle with a force of 20 pounds and then someone, someone or something is pulling in this direction, 30 degrees down from the x-axis, with a force of 16 pounds. So we'll call this the x-direction, we'll call this the y-direction. And we want to find the resultant force for this setup. All right, so what we do is we set up, okay, we'll call this one F1, so the first force, F1, and then F2 down here. We want to get the component forms of F1 and F2. Well, F1 is really going to be 20 pounds times the first unit vector. We'll call it U1. And F2 is going to be 16 pounds times a unit vector U2. All right, so this 20 pounds is going to be multiplied onto a unit vector in the direction of 45 degrees to get the vector that has the magnitude 20 pounds and the angle 45 degrees. Similarly, we want to multiply a unit vector in the direction of 30 degrees down from the x-axis, so that's often called negative 30 degrees, but a unit vector in the direction of negative 30 degrees multiplied by 16 pounds will give us this exact force that has 16 pounds magnitude pointing in the direction of negative 30 degrees. So what are these unit vectors? U1 is just going to be cosine 45 i hat plus sine 45 j hat. These are in degrees. But yeah, that's just the unit vector in the direction of 45 degrees. That's really x component cosine 45, y component sine of 45. That's really just basic trigonometry right there. So this unit vector needs to have a magnitude of 1, and it's going to be right on top of this vector here. So the unit vector u1 is right here, and the unit vector u2 is going to be right down here. So u1 and u2 are going to be very similar. So u2, the second unit vector, is going to be cosine of 30 degrees i hat and now negative sine 30 degrees j hat because it's going in the negative y direction so it has to have a negative y component and we could say cosine of negative 30 is the same as cosine of 30 and sine of negative 30 degrees is negative sine of 30 degrees Either way, you're going to end up with a y component that's negative for this second unit vector. So now we can get our forces. F1 is going to equal 20 times cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2 i hat. Sine of 45 is the same thing, square root of 2 over 2 j hat. F2 is going to equal 16 cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2 i hat and sine of 30 is 1 half so it's negative 1 half j hat multiply these out we get 10 square roots of 2 i hat plus 10 square roots of 2 j hat and that's our first force f1 so that is the component form of this force whose magnitude is 20 and angle is 45, so that's the F1 vector. The F2 vector, multiply that out. This is going to be 8 square roots of 3 i hat minus 8 j hat. Now the resultant force is the addition of these two forces. So the resultant force, we'll call it FR, force sub r is going to be f1 vector plus f2 vector. Now, 
the resultant force, if we think about it just a little bit beforehand, try to figure out where this force is going to point. Let's see, we're pulling in the x direction this way and we're pulling in the x direction this way, so it should point in the positive x direction somewhere, but it looks like we're pulling up with more force than we're pulling down, so it's probably going to have a positive y component and be something like this. So that's just our preliminary guess. We'll find out exactly what the angle is and the magnitude whenever we find out what the components are for f r. So if we add these two vectors together, then all we do is we add the corresponding components. So this is going to be i hat components added together, which will give us 10 square roots of 2 plus 8 square roots of 3 i hat plus 10 square roots of 2 minus 8 j hat. So that is the resultant force in component form, but it doesn't really look very pretty. Like th this is not easy to visualize. It's going to be easier for us to visualize if we have the magnitude and the direction angle. All right, so the magnitude of FR is just the square sum of the components. Take the square root. So the magnitude is going to be the square root of 10 square root of 2 plus 8 square root of 3 squared plus 10 square root of 2 minus 8 quantity squared. Now take the square root of that whole number. Now that turns out to be about 28.66. So 28.66 and that would be pounds. So the, the forces are acting together. They're not canceling each other out. They're not acting in perfect unison, but they are acting together to produce a larger force than either one of the individual forces. Now, theta is going to be the arctan of y component over the x component. So arctan, the y component is 10 square root of 2 minus 8. And the x component is 10 square root of 2 plus 8 square root of 3. Now this angle in degrees is going to be 12.37 roughly, so 12.37 degrees, more or less. All right, so that's our magnitude, that's our angle, and now we can see that that's exactly what we kind of thought it was going to be. It was going to be in the positive x direction, and it does have a positive y component, so this 12 Point three seven degrees right here. So this is the resultant force FR.